Hi, I'm Dr. Montgomery, and today we'll be going through a problem um, that has been seen on exams before uh, related to uh, somewhat of a fairly basic uh, circuit overall, only incorporating resistors as well as a current source and a voltage source here, both independent sources sp specifically. So we'll kind of walk through here. I encourage you to kind of go ahead and copy down the circuit diagram in your notes. And then there's going to be three different parts to this problem that we're going to kind of work through individually. And so kind of take note of this overall, what we're ultimately trying to find is what the voltage V2 is here across this four kilo ohm resistor um, due to the impact of both of these sources individually, but it's kind of broken down into three parts. Um, so we'll go ahead and get started with part A. Okay, so for part A, it tells us that if my voltage of this voltage source V1 is equal to 12 volts and my current source here I is simply equal to zero amps, then what is the voltage V2? Well, if my current source I is set to uh, equal to zero amps, that basically means it's more or less deactivated as we've talked about. Um, so if this source is deactivated, if there's no current traveling through this branch, then we could basically more or less view this entire circuit as though this is an open circuit right here, which means that this voltage V1 has to be dropped entirely across these three resistors, which happen to be just in a ser single series loop overall, since again, there's no current flow um, through this branch specifically here. So the easiest way to, for us to figure out what voltage V2 is, is to use the so-called the voltage divider rule. Okay. And again, the voltage divider kind of derives from Kirchhoff's voltage law overall, um, which you're hopefully aware of as well. In this case, we have just, again, three series resistors, one voltage source. I want to know what the voltage V2 is. So my voltage V2 is going to be equal to the value of that resistor, four kilo ohms, over the series combination, or just the sum of all three resistors here, which would give me a sum of 12 kilo ohms. And that ratio or that quantity, I multiply times whatever the value of this total voltage V1 happens to be, which is indicated as 12 volts, okay? So a little couple of easy math here will give us that voltage V2 is equal to four volts overall using the voltage um, divider rule. So we'll put that there. Okay, so let's move on to part B. Okay, so for the second part of the problem here, we're kind of looking at the opposite case. We're saying that my, our voltage source, uh, V1, is going to be equal to zero volts, so it's not outputting any voltage at all. But our current source here in the middle branch is putting out a total of six milliamps. So if this voltage source is, is set to zero volts, then what does that mean? Well, it basically means that this is entirely shorted out. So if you want to sort of revisualize the circuit that we're looking at, you can just imagine that this is one wire that connects directly across that voltage source because there is no voltage drop or voltage rise um, through this branch here specifically. So since we have uh, just one current source then but that's basically active in the circuit, and we know that that current, that current from that current source is going to be divided between this branch and this branch, we could then use, as you might expect, the current divider rule. Because even though we're trying to ultimately find a voltage across this resistor here, uh, the easiest way to do that is to figure out what the current flow is through that resistor. Then we'll simply use Ohm's law to figure out what that actual voltage is. So in order to set up the current, uh, let's say that this is current, um, we'll call this I2 flowing through this branch here. So we could use the current divider rules to, to tell us that the current I2 is going to be equal to, again, some ratio of the resistors that we have available. So now, again, in contrast to the way the voltage divider is set up, here we look at the opposite branch. So we want to find the current here, but we look at the opposite branch to find that the value of the resistance there, which is the 4K. And then again, over the sum of the combination, since all these resistors um, would more or less sum together as though in series, so that would be over 12K. And then multiplied times my total current, which again is they indicated as six milliamps, which will give me a quantity of two milliamps. All right, so we know that we have two milliamps of current flowing through this branch. Uh, hopefully you would also realize then that if I had indicated some current here, let's say I3, we should know that we have four milliamps of current traveling through this branch, because that would give us uh, satisfy um, KCL rules and such. So now what do we do to figure out what the voltage V2 is? Well, we know the current. 
So we can again just simply use Ohm's law, V equals IR. The value of the current is two milliamps. The value of my resistance, of course, is four kilo ohms. But aside from just multiplying the two values, again, we need to be cognizant or, or mindful of what's going on with the polarities and such. So if you notice that the direction of the current that we've indicated, because we've uh, indicated it based on the, f the original direction given to us in the problem, is showing that current traveling into the negative side of this voltage that has been defined for us in the problem, right? So because of this, we need to indicate this as a negative quantity overall in order so that we're in sync with the polarities that have been defined for us. So here we would have a total value of negative eight volts as our solution for part B. And so again, I just remind everybody to be very uh, aware of this issue related to how we define the positive and negatives in any type of problem such as this one, which we'll see where, again, in this case, you just want to follow however the problem is set up for you. In this case, that polarity was defined. Sometimes that polarity is not defined, and you ha might, might have to define that yourself. And as we've kind of seen in other uh, problems and examples, it's not always um, uh, real clear which way you should do it, but you just start out with some way and then solve the problem accordingly, and you should wind up just fine either way. Okay, so let's move on to part C then. Okay, so in the third and final part of this problem here, what we're looking at now, as you can uh, see, is that both the voltage source and the current source are, is going to be active to now figure out what voltage V2. But notice that the values are the same as what we've used in parts A and B. So the voltage source is set to a quantity of 12 volts, and the current, set, current source is set to a value of 6 milliamps. Those are the same values here. So now, while we could go ahead and just put those in there and look at the circuit, try to solve it using our uh, known KVL, KCL rules to figure out what voltage V2, the much more straightforward approach in this case is actually to use the concept of superposition. So if you recall, what superposition allows us to do is if we are able to evaluate the circuit uh, simply due to the effects of one source and then separately to evaluate the effects due to a separate source, and it doesn't matter if I have two sources or ten sources, I just if I can isolate what the effect of each individual source is, as is what that's basically what we've done in parts A and B. Um, then we can just sum or add up the quantities or the, the effects from all those different sources, and that would tell us what the combined net effect is from all those sources happening, given that this is a linear uh, circuit overall. Um, so in order to do that, we can just indicate that V2 is just going to be the sum of these two values from parts A and B. So it's just going to be 4 volts plus my negative 8 volts which of course would just give me a value of negative four volts here. So again, this is just indicating that if both of these sources are active um, and their values are, are unchanged from the previous parts, then the combined effect uh, on this voltage V2 is gonna be that that voltage will be a negative four volts overall. And so that's, you know, obviously this is a much uh, simpler way. We we're able to do everything in one very quick equation rather than having to come up with some other KVL or KCL equations, which saved, saved us quite a bit of time um, on doing things. So that wraps up everything for this problem. Hope to see, hope to see you all in the next video.